everybody, it's Paul. I'm in southwestern Nebraska right now uh, in some canyons that are uh, my folks. This area is kind of interesting because usually if you think of Nebraska, you're going to think of just flat plains, cornfields, and a lot of it is that. And if you drive through, probably that's what you're going to see because that's they built the interstate through the river valley. Uh, it's an easy drive, but actually a large part of the state is hills or canyons. Um, and some of the more interesting areas. So this area here has quite a few different trees. Uh, in terms of wildlife, there's a lot of wildlife. Mule deer, white-tailed deer. There's elk here, actually pretty large elk live in this area. Bobcats, wild turkeys. And there's still a lot of native plants around too. So right now I'm just in some cedar trees. These look like they're dead, I know, from this view, but this is just because they're dense enough. The lower branches are, are dying off up high. They're still alive. So uh, really a pretty area. So hope you enjoy it. While looking at some of the views of the canyons here in this area of Nebraska, I thought I'd use this video to also look at a species of tree. Uh, the eastern red cedar, which is coming to dominate this area and many other areas in Nebraska. Uh, as I was walking around the canyons, I was thinking about this tree, and I think it ties our trip in well with our project in the Philippines in, in kind of an unusual way. Uh, just as a quick background, Nebraska is not known for being a heavily forested area because most of the state is grasslands. Although, interestingly enough, it's where Arbor Day started in the United States. Uh, but much of the ecology and biodiversity in Nebraska is associated with native grasslands. And so is quite a bit of the economy since those grasslands are used for cattle grazing or harvesting of hay. The eastern red cedar is a native tree to the area, but until Relatively recently, it didn't take over too much of the land area because there were frequent natural prairie fires that would burn through and keep the population of cedar trees under control. Uh, with modern fire suppression methods, the trees were able to establish much more easily and as a result have been spreading quickly, they can choke out many of the other native grasses and plants and don't leave room for other native trees such as a cottonwood tree. So this is kind of an interesting situation where a native tree is now considered to be an invasive tree because of the natural processes uh, that once controlled it have not been allowed to take place. Additionally, environmental factors such as drought and human planting activities have helped it to spread. Uh, it's, for instance, used commonly in windbreaks in Nebraska. Uh, right now, one of the main methods used to control the red cedar is through burning and cutting the trees. So you can see large piles of cut cedar trees in the background of this photo. Uh, this is really it's a temporary solution though because the trees are able to reestablish themselves. Uh, here you can see some of the cedar berries which contain the seeds of these trees. The trees produce lots of these. Um, and actually it might not look like it, but these are technically considered cones instead of berries, but that's their common name is a cedar berry. Uh, these are also dispersed by animals, so cutting the trees requires consistent maintenance. Uh, there are uh, some attempts to cut only the female trees. This tree has male and female trees, so there are some attempts to leave the male trees and utilize them for windbreaks while cutting the female trees so that the, they're not spreading. Uh, the tree does have other uses besides windbreaks. Uh, the wood looks nice, it smells nice, it's durable, it's insect resistant. Uh, this is a cabin made of cedar, which is in northern Nebraska. It's really a beautiful wood. It's also used for fence posts because it weathers well. Uh, as I was looking at the trees when I was back in Nebraska, I realized that's kind of an interesting comparison when you look at them and what has been happening in the Philippines in terms of forests and trees. So in Nebraska, the cedar tree is a native tree, but it's spreading to the point that it's considered invasive. 
whereas in the Philippines people are trying to keep populations of native trees to a sustainable level. Uh, there's considerable debate in the Philippines also about planting of non-native trees that are considered invasive by many. The cedar trees in Nebraska are also spreading because people have repressed the wildfires and native grasses. Uh, in the Philippines, uh, fires, in intentional or unintentional, are limiting the spread of native trees and leading to grasslands where there was once forests. Uh, and finally, in Nebraska, large amounts of money and resources are spent to cut and control these trees. While in the Philippines, resources are being spent to try to keep trees from being cut. So really in both areas, it looks like they're kind of opposite situations, but the underlying problem really is the same. Uh, you have human intervention without full understanding or possibly indifference to long-term consequences. And in both, con in both cases, uh, we're dealing with those consequences now. So really, People can exist without some influence on nature, but we need to be as informed as possible about our choices and look at the costs and benefits that are involved uh, and see them as involving more than just money and not just looking at the short term. So I'm interested to see what will happen in the coming decades with this landscape. Is it just another stage in a long-term change of the ecosystem of the area? Uh, will people work to revert the area back to what it was previously? Will they just let nature take its course? Uh, I'm sure it's going to be a combination of those, but in 30 or 40 years, I think it'll be interesting for me to look back on this video and see in hindsight what's occurred and the consequences of our actions and policies. I'll include a couple of links in the description if you'd like to learn more about the topic. But thanks for watching, everyone.